Hey there, today we're gonna be dissolving Decanta. Just kidding, I don't wanna dissolve, but we are gonna be talking about dissolving and whether or not certain substances will dissolve in other substances. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to use the words soluble and insoluble in the context of solubility and dissolving. So today we're going to be talking first and foremost always about our background information and our predictions first. So what does it even mean to dissolve? What is this dissolving thing? And there's this other thing called likes dissolve likes that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to run through our predictions. First I want you to think of your predictions and I'm also going to share mine. Secondly, we're going to head into the lab area and we're going to see and test whether things will dissolve in other things. We're gonna test it. Some of them might take a couple days to do, some of them might dissolve instantly. So this video will be pieced together over a series of days. We're going to go over those important words, that soluble, insoluble, solubility, what those mean, and we're going to be using those words to analyze our results. So we're going to specifically plug those words in into our results box at the very end. Let's jump into it. So first and foremost, what is dissolving? Well, dissolving is basically like all those parts we've been talking about. By the way, go watch my other videos. I talk about parts per million, parts per billion, lead tests, home water tests, and a lot of other things to do with solutions, solute, solvent, solution. And those parts that we've been referring to essentially separate apart from each other. They break apart. That's what it means to dissolve. So what I want you to think of is basically like poor Spider-Man over here um, from, <laughs> from the last Avengers movie is what we want to say is, okay, well, he's literally breaking apart. All of his whole parts are breaking apart into little fat fragments. So what we can say then is that Spider-Man literally dissolved in air, right? This is why I said, I don't want to dissolve. I like I choose life. I like life. All right. So we are, we are going to assume that dissolving is parts breaking apart from each other. So just kind of keep that image in your mind on a very small molecular level kind of thing. That's what's happening to all the little chemicals. They're breaking apart, just like Spider-Man. All right. So some more background information. It's important to know that some chemicals will dissolve in others and some just don't. We can make predictions on this based off of a chemical structure. Now we haven't talked about chemical structures or compositions or what these parts are yet. So what I want you to think about is basically there's this premise called likes dissolve likes. In other words, if you have parts from one chemical that are like parts in another chemical, then they dissolve in each other. If the two parts are different from each other, so they're unlike each other, then they don't dissolve into each other. So basically what you want to think about is kind of like, think about like high school cliques, right? Typically the jocks will kind of click together with the jocks and the preppy girls with the preppy girls and likes dissolve likes. So you kind of hang out with people that are like you stereotypically here. Similar with chemicals, they like or they dissolve and hang around each other if they are similar to each other, if those parts are the same or similar to each other. So if a chemical is similar again, then it will dissolve. We have a special word for that that we're gonna go over here in a second. If they are unlike each other, they will not dissolve. So the word then is solubility. That is the special chemistry word that we're going to use, that highfalutin word for dissolvability. That's pretty much it. So when we talked about Spider-Man breaking up into tiny fragments, whether or not those parts will play nice with each other, if they're the same, then we're talking about its solubility. How dissolvable is it in one thing or another? If the parts are similar, therefore they play nice with each other, we say that they are soluble in one another. They can form a solution. In other words, most of us have seen salt dissolve in water, so we could say that salt is soluble in water. That's another way of saying that. Or its solubility is that it will dissolve. It's soluble, okay? Now, if we're looking at something else that does not dissolve in water, so a part that doesn't play nice with another part of a different chemical, we say that they are different from each other. They're too different. That's like, I don't know, maybe one of the 
uh, gothic people from one club trying to come hang out with the preppy girls. I don't know, something like that. They're, they're not going to dissolve well together, stereotypically here, right? They're not going to play well. And so in that case, they won't dissolve into each other. And therefore, we say they are insoluble. So they're not a match, right? They're not going to dissolve. In other words, we could say like butter. If you try and put butter into water or oil into water, if you've ever tried to do that, you notice that they don't mix. It's like a lava lamp because the two parts are too different from each other. They don't want to jive together. They kind of got their own click thing going on. So we would say that oil or butter... Um, is insoluble in water, all right? So that's its solubility. Alrighty, so we're gonna jump right into the predictions here, what I think is gonna happen. But before I tell you what I think, I want you to think first. So these are all of the chemicals that we're going to mix together. We're gonna try and see the solubility of these various solutes. So you can see right here all along the um, vertical column, that I've got a bunch of different solutes we're gonna test in a bunch of different solutions, right? So all up there, we've got a bunch of different solutions or solvents. In this case, I want you to just pause the video here and fill out this table yourself. What do you think? Yes or no, is it going to dissolve or not? For example, do you think that the water will dissolve the rock? Yes or no? right there, right? Do you think that oil will dissolve a tooth? And yes, these are real teeth, by the way. I had all four wisdom teeth removed and um, they're, they're real nasty, actually. They look really gross. Um, so a few years ago, I had them all removed and I saved them because I thought, you know, one day I'm gonna use these for science and here we are, we're gonna use them for science, it's great. So I want you to think, would a tooth dissolve in any one of the solvents? What do you think? Do you think that the parts are going to play nice with each other or maybe not? What's its solubility going to be like? How about salt? Will salt dissolve in vinegar? What do you think? How about styrofoam? I don't know, a styrofoam cup? Have you a styrofoam cup in water? Will that dissolve? Will it be soluble or insoluble? Will the parts play nice or not nice? Anyways, go ahead and take a stab at what you think. Uh, pause the video, fill in this table, and then we'll go through. Hopefully you paused it, because I am moving on. All right, I'm a steamroller, baby. All right, let's go. So I think that pretty much a rock is not going to be soluble, or it's going to be insoluble in all of the solvents I have chosen. I do not think that the rock will dissolve, especially not within maybe five to seven days time that I'm allotting for this dissolving thing to occur. So what do I think about the tooth then? The tooth, I think, will not dissolve, so it's insoluble in water, oil, and acetone, but I think that the tooth might dissolve in vinegar and coke. Now, why do I think that? Not because I analyze the chemical structure of a tooth or bone marrow or anything like that. All I know is that if you drink coke, your teeth hurt, at least mine do. And if you drink vinegar, your teeth hurt. So I kind of think maybe that has something to do with breaking down your tooth. Maybe that's why it hurts. So I think that a tooth might be soluble in vinegar and Coke. Let's talk about salt. Well, with salt, I've already seen in my own life from cooking on a day-to-day -day basis that salt does dissolve in water. So that one I kind of already know, but we're gonna test it nonetheless because we're scientists. We gotta test everything, question everything. So oil, however, I don't really think it will just based off of some observations I've seen making salad dressing and stuff. It kind of just chills out in there. I don't know, we'll try it. Vinegar, I think vinegar is kind of like water when I make salad dressing. This is the whole premise by, for this, by the way. I'm basing it off of like when I make salad dressing. Vinegar, oil, water, you have all those things together. Acetone, shot in the dark here, I don't know. I've never tried to put salt in nail polish remover, uh, so, I've got acetone, we're gonna try it. And Coke, I think I think you kinda drink Coke, it's got a lot of water in it too, so maybe I think it will be soluble in Coke. My prediction for styrofoam is that I don't think it will dissolve in water. I think it's insoluble in water, oil, and vinegar. And I think it has a chance to maybe dissolve 
in the acetone and the coke, meaning that the parts of styrofoam would be similar to the parts of acetone and coke, if it does, if it is soluble, we'll see. Butter, all right, so just plain old unsalted butter, Kroger butter. Uh, water, no, I've already tried this before. This is based off of my past experience, but we're gonna test it again by Jove. No, I don't think I, it will dissolve in water and I don't think it will dissolve in acetone, but we will see. Uh, let's see, oil? I think so. I think this because when we're talking about parts, we're also talking about what they're like. If you've ever touched oil, it feels kind of slimy and slippery, and so does butter. It feels slimy and slippery if you get it on your fingers. So I think that those parts are the same or similar. So therefore, I think they would be soluble in one another. Vinegar and Coke, those were kind of a shot in the dark. Maybe. I think so. We'll see. Eggshell. Eggshell peeled right off an egg from a hard-boiled egg that my husband made this morning. Water? No. I don't think it's going to dissolve in water. And I don't think it will dissolve in oil, so I think it's insoluble in both of those. And I feel like it might be soluble in vinegar, acetone, and coke. Hmm. Not sure entirely why uh, it would be in coke, but we'll find out. We'll find out. Let's see. Cornstarch. Hmm. Cornstarch, real fun when you mix it in water. Personal experience from the past, by the way. If you've never done it, do it. Just without question, do it. Get cornstarch, water, put those two together and just have fun. You'll see. You'll thank me later. All right, so cornstarch and water, no, I don't think those two are compatible. The parts are too unsimilar, if you will. So I don't think they will be soluble. And I don't think that cornstarch will dissolve in oil either. But I do have a feeling that cornstarch might be soluble in vinegar, acetone, and coke. Again, these are just predictions. We don't know. That's what we're going to test for. Aluminum. So aluminum foil, like what you wrap up your bread with or whatever, your sandwiches to take to school or, you know, whatever. Aluminum foil. Tin foil. Hmm. Well, that's a metal. So I don't think it'll dissolve in water. And I don't think it'll dissolve in oil or acetone either but I have a feeling it might dissolve in vinegar and Coke. And the reason I say that is because those seem more acidic to me. Again, we haven't talked about acidity yet, but that's the kind of stuff where I mentioned it makes your teeth hurt. Things that are more acidic like lemon juice tend to make your teeth hurt and they tend to break down stuff like that. So I think something that's more acidic might have the tendency to break down aluminum foil. Last but not least, the folic acid is a little bit of a uh, personal endeavor here since I'm taking a lot of folic acid for my developing baby. So I want to know what does folic acid best dissolve in? I would certainly hope it would dissolve in something more acidic, as I just mentioned before, because stomach acid is an acid and in order for it to actually dissolve into my body and get to my baby, it would need to dissolve in my stomach acid. So I'm hoping that folic acid will in fact dissolve in the acidic things like vinegar and Coke. And I think it might also dissolve in acetone and water. However, I do not think that it's soluble in oil. So therefore I think it's only going to be insoluble in oil and soluble in all the other solvents that I've chosen. Alrighty. So now that you have my predictions and hopefully you have your own, let's jump right into the lab and get going. All right, here we are in the lab area of my, well, sunroom, really, pardon the mess, I apologize. But we've got a whole layout here of all the different things we're going to test. So we've got our distilled water, we've got some oil, some vegetable oil, we've got vinegar, we've got acetone, and we've got Coke. We've also got rocks right here. They're all pre-weighed. So I took a little at-home scale. You can buy these anywhere online, really. It's a little tiny scale like this guy right here. Right there. You just put those two together. So in order to save some time, I pre-massed everything in grams to the tenth of a decimal place because it is a very small, small scale. It's not, you know, anything fancy, really. So I've got all the masses written on these little tiny cups here, which I will show you as we get started, just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. So we've got our rocks, 
right here in this first row. We've got the wisdom teeth, dun dun dun, that got ripped out of my face. Um, I don't believe I have these in the same order currently as I do on the slides, I apologize. But um, we also have salt right here, my eggshells, starch, styrofoam, uh, tin foil, then butter, and I'll show you this, I promise I'll move the camera, butter and then folic acid in the final row there. All right, so what we wanna do is test whether these solvents or solution in the case of the Coke is going to dissolve any of these solutes that I have out on the table here. But before we do that, before I'm going to touch a single one of these chemicals, you have to always practice lab safety first. I know that I'm the mad scientist, right? Enter at own risk, dun dun dun. But always safety first. So in order to do that, I need to get into my lab gear. So pause for a second. My hair is back, my goggles are on, so are my gloves, and my nice little tie-dye lab coat. All right, now we can start playing, now that I'm wearing some safe lab gear. Let's get started. So I'm going to pour in each solvent or solution all the way down the row first, and then I'll show you on the camera up close what's happening in real time. In order to save time, I didn't measure out with a graduated cylinder an exact volume for each one of these, but what I'm going to do is fill each one of these little cups right up until the brim. And then I've got lids for them for any of the ones that I think might need to sit for a couple days just to see if they dissolve, not immediately, but later. Sometimes solubility takes some time. So we're gonna have those as well to keep them not contaminated from the outside world of my sunroom already. So first things first, some distilled water. Day one, this rock right here is 10.2 grams. So we're gonna go ahead and pour that all the way up to the brim right there. We've got my wisdom teeth. They're little pieces of the tooth, really, because I only have four of them and there's five columns here, so it's kind of like little fragments broken off. And I have 0 0.2 grams for the water test. Again, we're gonna fill that up right to the brim. All right. I've got one gram of salt, which by the way is the same for all the salt. I made sure they were all one gram. Right up to the brim. I've got some eggshells and they are 0 0.5 grams. Again, I made sure that the eggshells were all 0 0.5 grams across the board. I've got one gram of corn starch. Again, one gram is consistent throughout. All the way up to the brim there. I've got a small piece of styrofoam. Now styrofoam for the scale I have is much too light in order to actually get something other than measuring like a whole cup. And I can't fit a whole styrofoam cup in this tiny little thing. So what I did was I cut the same size styrofoam pieces to put in each cup. So a little bit more quanti they're qualitative in that respect than it is quantitative, but we're gonna deal with it. It's a home test, right? We're, we don't have all the fancy schmancy lab stuff. So we're just gonna work with what we got. Same thing I did for the styrofoam I did with the tin foil. Again, tin foil is really light, too light for my scale to measure. So what I had to do was just cut the same size pieces for all across and kind of assume that they're roughly the same mass. All right, I've got 1.4 grams of butter right here. Funny story, when I was in high school, I'm, I'm fluent in German, by the way. So when I was in high school, I was in Spanish class, and my professor, uh, Dr. Bowers, he um, was talking about different foods in Spanish. And since I'm fluent in German, but not quite so much fluent in Spanish, I, um, I said the word for butter in German, which happens to be puta. And um, let's just say that didn't go over too well in Spanish class. I quickly found out what that word meant in Spanish as opposed to German. So um, fun fact of the day, butter in German is a bad word in Spanish. I wouldn't recommend saying it. All right, so we've got water throughout. Let's go ahead and move this camera. I apologize for the jiggliness. What we've got here, we've got a rock. Doesn't look like there's any uh, dissolving going on in there. We've also got my wisdom teeth fragments, the 0.2 grams. They're still looking pretty solid in there as well. The salt looks like it's pretty much dissolved. So this is what the salt looks like before. This is what it looks like right now. So it kind of looks like most of the salt is gone. We're gonna give it a little bit of a stir. Just making a mess, that's what we do in chemistry. We make a mess, right? So spill it everywhere. Definitely looks like salt is dissolving in the water, just as we kind of predicted there. We've got some eggshells over here. Eggshells don't look like they're uh, doing too hot, but we're gonna let them sit there, because why not? This is our cornstarch. <laughs> cornstarch is kind of like making the water look all frothy, kind of looks like. So. It's kind of hard to say. Seems like that amount actually might have dissolved a little bit in this water, contrary to what I thought. Let's check underneath. What we see? We see any clumps? <laughs> kind of looks like there might be a couple clumps. So we're gonna let this guy sit because why not? Why not? The styrofoam there is definitely um, not dissolving, right? That's just floating. It's kind of like a little little raft there. All right, so definitely insoluble in water. The uh, tin foil thus far is uh, also not not showing any signs of solubility. Just very much insoluble thus far. All right, the butter, the butter. Let's check it out. Let's try and give the butter a stir. Doesn't really look like uh, doesn't really look like those atoms are uh, likes dissolve likes. They do not want to be next to each other, right? That is not that is not happening. I'm just gonna go with that one being case closed. This is definitely insoluble, guys. That's not gonna happen. But we're gonna let it sit there because why not? And last but not least, we've got our folic acid. Our folic acid. And now that folic acid again, that's what I was saying earlier. It's just you know stuff that I take for for pregnancy, uh, help out the baby there, grow big and strong. And it certainly looks like that is dissolving pretty well. All right. So we're definitely seeing some solubility in water with that folic acid tablet. We're gonna move on to our oil here. Vegetable oil into the rock, up to the line. Let's see. We've got a tooth, 
and that is 0 0.9 grams. That's probably one of my top wisdom teeth. Pop back, maybe. All right, we've got our salt, consistently one gram throughout. All right. Our eggshell, again, 0.5 grams, same throughout. We've got the cornstarch, one gram, same throughout. I've got my styrofoam, which is just a piece. I've got my tinfoil, and I've got my booter. And last but not least, our folic acid tablet. Oh, wait. The rock. Not to be confused with the rock. Johnson, right, right. There is my tooth. Da, da, da. Man, I tell you, it was super nasty. Handling those was disgusting, actually. It was not pleasurable. All right, so there we've got our salt in this one. Gotta give that one a stir. You can kind of, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's grinding pretty bad. I don't think that's going anywhere, guys. I'm gonna say that that is insoluble, but we'll let it sit. These eggshells, looks like there's a little bubble coming off of one, which is kind of weird, but uh, we're gonna let that one sit. So far, it looks insoluble. Corn starch, give this one a swirl. Hmm. Looks pretty clumpy, but kind of looks like it might. It might dissolve. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna give that one a fair shot. Why not? We'll come back to that one later. Styrofoam, not doing so hot. Just floating, All right? We'll try and poke it down there. Nope, nope, all right. The uh, metal, tin foil, also just kind of chilling, chilling like a villain, not doing much. Butter, let's give butter a stir. Let's see if butter does anything special for us. All right, so so far, the butter, from what I can tell you, just the consistency, is breaking up a lot easier than it did in the water. So if you take a look at what it looked like in the water, it's still just floating there, right? This is actually kind of breaking up relatively easy. So that seems like there might be some parts that are playing nice with each other. Alrighty. And our folic acid tablet right there. So let's check this guy out, give him a poke. And he does not seem to be doing much. He does not want to dissolve in that oil. It's not even remotely breaking apart. Hmm. All right, we'll let that one sit. So, vinegar on rock. The ultimate battle. Vinegar on tooth, 1.3 grams. This tooth is, uh, quite, I think it's probably the other top one because they're a little smaller. I'm gonna douse that tooth in some vinegar. All right, we got some salt, one gram, again, as I mentioned before. We got 0.5 grams of eggshell in vinegar. We got one gram of cornstarch in vinegar. That actually looks like it started to dissolve right away. Hmm, interesting, we'll see. We've got our styrofoam piece in vinegar. We've got our lovely little piece of aluminum foil in vinegar. And the last two, we've got butter and we've got folic acid. Alrighty. So what we can see is that the, uh, the rock looks like it's holding pretty steady in rock form. Nothing's changed. The tooth, I don't see any bubbling or anything like that in the vinegar thus far. We're gonna keep it in there though, just to see. We've also got our salt, which looks like it's pretty much disappeared. We'll give that a stir in a second. The eggshells, hmm, I want you to notice that the eggshells are kind of bubbly. That's interesting. There definitely seems to be some kind of reaction going on there, because we see bubbles present. Hmm, all right. There's our cornstarch, looking real uh, frothy there. We'll give that one a stir here again in a second. Styrofoam piece, still just chilling, floating just like the other times. Our aluminum foil, I don't see any bubbles. I don't see any reaction thus far, it's just kind of chilling there. See some butter, we'll give that guy a swirl in a second. And, as predicted, the folic acid tablet does look like it's breaking apart readily in the more acidic solvent nail polish remover. It claims to be 100% pure acetone. However, if you look on the ingredients in the back, there also seems to be a uh, denatonium benzoate in it as well. So not pure acetone, but pretty much as close as you're going to get for uh, not ordering lab grade. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to pour this acetone on our rock. Up to the line. Acetone on our tooth. Up to the line. Oh, and that tooth, by the way, is 1.4 grams, so that's probably one of my back molars. And the roots, you'll see on these, are nasty. They're hecka gross. We've got acetone on our salt. Oh man, this stuff's stanky. Oh, it smells like a nail salon. we got half a gram of eggshell in our acetone. One gram of cornstarch in acetone. We've also got our styrofoam. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. It's almost completely gone. All right. So something about styrofoam and acetone is similar. Acetone cup. Here's our styrofoam piece. You can see that it is now completely dissolved. So styrofoam is soluble in acetone. Last but not least, let's just pour the coke on this one and we can go over these last two rows at the same time. Now if I'm lucky this coke won't explode all over me in the middle of this video. Whew. We are good, we are good, I think, we are good, alrighty. So we are going to go ahead and pour this coke on the rock. 14.3 grams is this rock, by the way. Ooh, nice and boobles, lots of boobles. By the way, if you're wondering why I masked all of these before having them tested, it's because I want to check these over the next couple days and see if the mass changes. If the mass changes, then I can assume that that a part of my solute is now a part of the solution. So if my mass decreases over time, then I can kind of assume that that item, that solute, has dissolved. All right, so I've got my, oh, you can't really see, there we go. So I've got my Coke going onto the salt right now. We've got the eggshell right here. Here comes the Coke. 
It's quite frothy, quite bubbly. I'm gonna keep this Coke at room temperature, by the way. It has never been in the fridge. It's been at room temperature since I bought it and been sealed. As you saw, I just opened it. All right, we've got our corn starch right there. Oops. Styrofoam, which is just floating like it was in the water. We've got our metal, which is actually starting to float. It hasn't happened in the other one, so that's interesting to note. The uh, butter. All right. And last, but certainly not least, is our folic acid. Alrighty, here we go. The rockin' acetone, the rockin' Coca-Cola. Neither of which seem to really be doing much of anything. Got my tooth, one of my back molars, in acetone, and my tooth in Coca-Cola. Hopefully you can see those bubbles. There's definitely some reacting going on between the Coca-Cola and my tooth. It's actually vigorously bubbling, if you can see that. We've got acetone and salt, which I can still clearly see all those salt granules. That does not seem to be dissolving at all. Whereas in the Coke, let's see, can I hear any? Nope. I can't really hear any salt granules on the bottom. I'm gonna say that the salt did dissolve in the Coca-Cola. Here's my eggshells in acetone. Doesn't look like anything's happening. By the way, just for reference, let's check out the eggshells in vinegar over here. You can see they're really bubbling up quite a bit. Whereas there's not really any reaction going on here. Over here, looks like the eggshells are still there. I know it might be hard to see with the camera, but the eggshells are still there. They are not dissolved yet. We'll see if they do get dissolved. We've got our acetone in cornstarch. That looks like it might, might have something going on. Might got something going on. Oh, there's still quite a bit of froth or foam floating around in there, so I'm gonna say that's not dissolving. And over here, it kind of looks like it might be, might be dissolving. Let's check it out. Oh, nope, there's definitely a lot of clumps down there, so we're gonna let that one sit as well, inconclusive thus far. Over here, this was our styrofoam cup. And as you can see, for reference, styrofoam in vinegar, styrofoam in acetone. It's pretty much completely gone. Interesting. The styrofoam in the Coke, however, is just chilling, like all the other trials. The tin foil looks like it is also just chilling in the acetone. And funny enough, it's floating in the Coca-Cola. The butter over here, check the butter. The butter in acetone is definitely breaking apart pretty easily. So we can see that there is definitely some solubility properties there. So it definitely seems soluble in acetone. Over here in the Coca-Cola, let's check the Coke product. There's still a whole clump of butter in there. I'm gonna say that that's not working thus far. We're gonna say that's insoluble thus far. We've got our folic acid in acetone. Doesn't look like there's any dissolving going on. And over here in the Coca-Cola, I don't think I see the tablet anymore. All right. I didn't feel it moving around in there, so I'm thinking that that is dissolved. All right, you guys, we are going to sign off here and touch base again in a couple days. <laughs>
officially in. Let's go over them. So I took a few pictures just because I feel like the video out in my sunroom wasn't as clear as the pictures I could obtain on my camera, on my phone. So first and foremost, let's look at the picture of all the teeth lined up um, above my head up there. So first and foremost, we've got the little pieces that those were in the water. Well, the next one going from left to right, uh, that one was in the oil. The next one was in vinegar. The fourth one was in acetone and the fifth and last one was in the Coca-Cola. So there wasn't really much of a difference uh, in the texture, in the feel of the tooth or the mass really. There was a little bit of weirdness going on with the oil tooth, but we'll come back to that. But there wasn't a difference in the look or the feel of the teeth from the water, the oil or the acetone. However, the tooth that was soaking in vinegar actually had a mass decrease by 0.1 grams and you could visibly see the flakiness inside the cup. So you could see the top part of the tooth, the little white chalky flakes almost coming off the tooth. So if you look right there in that picture, all the way over there, it's gonna cut off my finger, there we go. But in the middle there, you can actually see the little white specks in the dish below that vinegar tooth. What I also noticed is that when I picked up the vinegar tooth, it almost felt spongy, if you will. It was still hard, don't get me wrong, but it was it was almost softer than the other teeth, ever so slightly, and you could scrape your nail across it and the tooth would actually come up like chalk almost. So gross, but also really cool. Lastly, the tooth that was in the Coca-Cola, it actually did opposite of what I thought it would. I thought it would dissolve, thereby it would lose mass. Uh, in this case, it gained mass, it gained 0.1 grams and changed color. It looks disgusting. It looks absolutely gross. It went from looking like the tooth and oil, all nice in that nice color there, right? Like my teeth, all pretty shiny, right? To brown. It's just nasty, like sewer brown. It took on the color of Coca-Cola or something. And I think that's what made it gain mass is that it took on that color and is now stained this nasty brown yellow color it still felt the same though when i picked it up it still felt like it had the same hardness at least after this week has been up uh, those two i will have sitting in their little cups for a longer amount of time and i'll make kind of a follow-up video after this once uh, maybe a month or something has gone by and we'll check back at them Additionally, the one above my head, that would be the oil and butter, just so you can kind of see that a little better. It looks like the butter was dissolving for the most part, but there's like chunks left over that are just kind of coagulated together. So when I write up my data table, I said, yes, partially, it kind of dissolved because you can tell it wasn't just clumped together in one, but there's also still little clumps there. So kind of partial dissolve, in my opinion. Uh, the eggshell in Coca-Cola, I also just wanted to point out right there, right next to me, is uh, just changed color, just like the tooth did. So when you took out the eggshell, it was a darker brown, and, and then on both sides where like the inside of the shell is white, that, that side was also brown. And um, the Coca-Cola itself actually started molding, so that was kind of gross. So you can kind of see it floating on the top there. Last but not least, the photo all the way to Oh, all the way over there. The, that one was the acetone and the folic acid. And as you can see, there's still some left over at the bottom there. So it kinda, kinda gives you this idea that, okay, maybe it was partially soluble as well, partially dissolved. But check out what the acetone did to that lid. So if you look at the picture, you can see, you can see right here that this lid is just like cracked and all of them were like that and all discolored. So the acetone was definitely also um, having its way with the, uh, the plastic tubs here as well. So let's go over these results, all of them together. I have color coded all of the predictions that were correct that I said in green and I color coded all of the ones in red that I predicted incorrectly. So I, I really do apologize for anybody that's red, green, colorblind, but we'll go over these together as well, just so you can keep following along. So for the rock, as predicted, none of them 
dissolve like it didn't dissolve in water oil vinegar acetone coke it, it just it it was a rock and that's kind of what i predicted so those are all in green and that i was right awesome uh for the tooth i got most of them right um however for oil I had a little discrepancy because my scale is not the best, my little balance out there. Um, and it it went from 0.9 grams to 0.8 grams. Now that could just be because it's a really bad, cheap scale and not a really good one. I, I don't really think it dissolved any, but in terms of the data, what we have is yes, it would have dissolved a little bit. Although, there was no evidence on the tooth that it looked like it was decaying or reacting in any way, shape, or form and still felt the same hardness. So I'm just gonna go yes, question mark. I mean, the data says so, but all of the other things that I observed say no. Um, I also predicted correctly that the vinegar would dissolve a part of the tooth. However, I was still exceptionally surprised because I didn't think it would dissolve like that. I, I guess I just, I, I didn't envision that it would be almost turning into chalk texture as it dissolved, which is really strange. And, and I don't know, if, if, I wish you could feel it because it feels weird, but I encourage you to do it. If you've got wisdom teeth or baby teeth at home, put the tooth in vinegar and just see what I mean. It's, it's really cool, actually. Um, acetone, I was correct. Coke, I was incorrect because I thought it would for sure dissolve in coke within a seven day period or that it would lose some mass. Instead, it gained mass exactly opposite of what I thought. Huh, all right. For the salt, I was correct across the board. So, woo, yay me. Um, for the styrofoam, I got one wrong. I thought it would dissolve in coke and it did not. So that's, that's kind of interesting there. Uh, for the butter, I, I got a lot of those wrong, the majority of those wrong. And for the oil, it was partially, as we kind of went over with that picture from before. So it was partially dissolved in the oil, but I mean, there were still clumps left over. And it definitely didn't dissolve in vinegar. And it definitely didn't dissolve in Coke. It was just completely clumped up, so I was wrong on those. And I was absolutely incorrect on acetone as well because it partially dissolved in the acetone. So actually even better than the oil, I think. There were smaller specks of butter left over. So even better solubility in acetone than in oil. Interesting. The eggshell, um, well, let's see, I got the first three right and the last two wrong. So I thought that the eggshell would dissolve perhaps in acetone and Coke over a week period. Nope, it was just chilling. And in the coat, it just changed colors. Same with the tooth, uh, also the tooth gaining mass, right? The cornstarch, I thought for sure cornstarch would dissolve in something. Turns out it doesn't dissolve in any of those. It just chills and makes this like solid layer at the bottom. And in fact, in water, it started molding. It was gross. Little green blobs everywhere, right? So, and then, you know, for vinegar, acetone, and coke, for all three of those, I was wrong. I thought for sure it would dissolve a little bit. Nada. Nothing. The aluminum. I also thought the aluminum would have dissolved in vinegar and coke. I was incorrect. Turns out it doesn't. It's still just chilling there. Albeit, Aluminum does dissolve in other acids like hydrochloric acid and you can put it in other um, in other solutions and other solvents that I don't have access to that you can watch it dissolve and make hydrogen gas, which is pretty cool. Uh, folic acid. Let's see. In water, it did dissolve partially, although there were those little specks left over, which I was kind of hoping it would have dissolved all the way in any of those, like vinegar as well. I, I guess that it would dissolve in vinegar, but again, only partially. So there was still like little specks left over at the bottom of the container. And in acetone, also little specks left over. In fact, the only one I didn't see little specks left over was the Coke right there, <laughs> the Coke. There was, that was the only one where folic acid tablet was just completely gone inside the Coke. So 
interesting. I was correct, but sort of, because some of them were only partial. But this is the reason why we make predictions and we do the experiment, right? You have to test it. So now what I'd like us to do is just kind of practice the words soluble and insoluble. I want you to pause the video here, so pause it, and practice going through all of these results and say soluble or insoluble for whether it dissolved or not using those words. Okay, so pause, try it. Okay, and we'll go through it together. So the rock was insoluble in any of the solvents or solution for Coke. The rock was insoluble, it did not dissolve. The tooth was insoluble in water and in acetone and in Coke. However, according to the data, it says that in oil, yes, question mark, somewhat soluble, but again, I don't think so, uh, but definitely soluble in vinegar. Interesting. Salt. Salt was found to be soluble in water, vinegar, and Coke. It was insoluble in oil and acetone. In fact, you could see all the little salt granules just chilling at the bottom in a clump. The styrofoam was insoluble in everything except for acetone. In acetone, it was soluble. The butter was insoluble in water, vinegar, and Coke. And it was soluble in oil and acetone, partially. The eggshell was insoluble in everything except for the vinegar. Okay. The cornstarch was just insoluble, plain insoluble, did not dissolve in any of those solvents. Hmm. Okay. The aluminum was also insoluble in any of the solvents that I have chosen for this experiment. Hmm. And last but not least, the folic acid was soluble in everything except for oil, where it was insoluble. I hope this was helpful in uh, helping you learn how to differentiate between soluble and insoluble. And um, that's all, folks. <laughs>